Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. We have quite the topic to tackle today. I'm going to be going over all of my 2019 makeup favorites from last year. And I'm going to kind of tell you where they're at now. Did I get rid of them? Do I still like them? Do I still even use them? So let's just get into it. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market. So I try out a lot of products, which is why my yearly favorites are a very, very big deal to me to really dive in and pick out what the best of the best was. And let me tell you, 2019, I really went ham so note to self i'm gonna try and shorten my list for 2020 and condense my favorites because wow we have a lot of products to talk about today so let's just get into it so starting off my long list from last year was the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter so i have two shades here, shade number one and shade number three, which is a little bit closer to my skin tone. I actually used this today. I mixed both of these shades and I put it underneath my foundation and I love these. I think these are such a universal product. You can use them for so many things. It's very, very versatile. They have a lot of different colors, which are gonna look great on different skin tones. It's a product that I felt like I liked it enough that I could buy multiple colors. And to this day, 2020, I still use this quite a lot. So if I do repeat favorites, which I don't think I will, but this is a favorite that definitely carried over into 2020. You can use it on top of your foundation as a liquid highlighter. You can use it below as a glowy base. And I just think it's such a good product. It is. It still is. I picked out a lot of foundations and I have to say I tried out some good foundations last year. This year, I don't know about my foundation favorites. I, I can't even think Think of a foundation that really stood out to me that was new for 2020 but last year I tried out the goods so the first one that I have to talk about is the La Mer the soft fluid foundation mine is greasy and oily on the back I'm gonna have to check out that drawer to see what exploded I love this foundation now unfortunately this did not get worn a lot this year this is a special occasion foundation very very pricey so i really only wear it when i'm going somewhere that i have to look really nice and obviously i didn't really have any events or anything to wear this to so it didn't end up getting worn it's a beautiful foundation but it's not something that carried over into 2020 but due to circumstances that are out of my hand but it's gorgeous. Another foundation that I loved last year, it's actually a tinted moisturizer. We have the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. This is 3N1 Sand, and I have to say, this is not a foundation that I used this year either. Like I said, this year, very, very different. If I was wearing makeup, it was a full, full face because I was filming, but I didn't wear makeup much more than that, really. I don't wear makeup when I teach right now from home at all. I used to wear makeup when I taught in person at school, but even if I was teaching, I don't wear face makeup with a mask. I just don't. That's why it's kind of an all or nothing deal for me. So this is still a good tinted moisturizer, but I don't think I used it once in 2020, if I'm being honest. And I'm not going to shame myself for that. It just didn't align with the 2020 scenario, you know? Ooh, okay, last year, I also discovered the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. I love this last year. It's a really nice foundation. Foundation. I haven't grabbed for it as much this year. I did choose to wear it today because it is a beautiful foundation and it's very affordable. The one thing about this though is you are going to be able to tell that you're wearing makeup. It's not one of those natural finishes. It's a little bit too perfecting. It definitely sits on the skin, but in a nice way. It makes your skin look very, very perfect. I love the way that it looks right now. I think it's a great foundation, but I honestly don't know why I didn't grab for this a lot. This was constantly on my mind to pick up and I never 
did, but it's really, really good and very affordable. So now another foundation, gosh, so many foundations came out last year. I remember it was just a flood of release after release, but we also have the ABH liquid foundation. I have mine in the shade 240N and I still use this a lot. This is not my shade. It's not. It is way, way, way too deep. The complete wrong undertone. I do not know what I was thinking when I picked up this shade, but it's really nice. And I still grab for this a lot to mix with foundations that I find to be a little bit too heavy because this does have such a dewy coverage. And if the color is too light, I use this a lot to make the color match me more. So this is a really great liquid mixing foundation. I don't wear it alone mostly because of the horrible color match, but it is a bit too dewy for me, believe it or not. I think it's a little bit too shiny, but it's perfect for mixing. So I definitely will always have this foundation in my collection because it's a great texture. We'll move on to concealers then. So for, I picked up the Power Fabric Foundation, but I meant to pick up the Armani Power Fabric Concealer. This is definitely still one of my favorite concealers, but I will say there was a concealer in 2020 that came out that is better than this. But up until that concealer came out, it's the Fabergraph by the way, this was my number one new favorite discover, discovery, discovery in 2020, 2019. <laughs> Ay ay ay. <laughs> my new favorite concealer discovery in 2019. Something about it was so natural, like the way that it spread out was so easy, but it also still gave the perfect medium coverage. So this is still one of my favorite concealers. It's just a better one came out this year, but so, so good still. And then also I did fall in love with the Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer. This is really good. I have mine in the shade 125 Light Natural. I stopped using this for a while because that Pat McGrath came out, but recently, actually, I've been picking it up again. Ever since I did my favorite drugstore products collab with Leora, I picked this up and I haven't been able to put it down. It, again, is the concealer that I'm wearing now. It's very, very similar to the Armani. Honestly, this I would consider to be a dupe for the Armani and it's very affordable. I feel like this concealer gets mixed reviews, but I really like it. Like it. I think it's amazing. It's definitely the best drugstore concealer that I've tried. And then I do have one powder and this is the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Foundation. And this actually makes me really sad because this was my work foundation. I wore this every single day to work. I love a powder foundation for work. I'm a PE teacher. I feel like I get a little bit sweaty. This is perfect. It mixes with my sweat very good. So I did use this January, February, and a little bit of March. And um, haven't used it since. Haven't, haven't needed to, so. Okay, now let's move on to bronzers. I discovered definitely some staple bronzers in 2019, just kind of taking a looky-looky here. So the first one that we have, I discovered the Milk Makeup Baked Bronzer. This is a cream bronzer. I remember I did a first full brand tutorial where I literally went into Sephora and bought a whole face and that was the only time I did it because it was really, really expensive. But this was a gem. This is still used and abused by me. I really love it. However, this year I will say I've been loving the Huda Beauty Tantor more and more. So I did discover this in 2019 and it was a favorite of mine, but this year I've been loving it even more and more because I stopped using my Chanel Tonde Chan no, my Tonde Chanel so much because it's really not available to you guys anymore. And this is the next best thing. I think I just prefer it because I really, I just love a sponge. I do everything with my face besides my eyes with a sponge. And I just think it's easier to stick it in here and blend it out. So that's why I reach for the Tantor still more. So this is probably my most used cream bronzer in my collection still. Powder bronzers, I had a couple last year that I really loved. So the first one was the Fenty Beauty Shady Biz Bronzer, and I apologize, I'm not gonna swatch anything in this video. Go check out my favorites video from last year if you want some more details. This is a lovely bronzer, but I have to say, 2020 brought on 
some good bronzers. So I think this is still one of my favorites. This still is definitely a top competitor. I just think it is a beautiful color that's just warm enough but still not really neutral. So I think it's a perfect color. So I still really enjoy this. It's not a top dog like it was in 2019, but it's still a favorite for sure. I completely forgot about, honestly, was the Maybelline City Bronzer, which was a favorite of mine in 2019. I have this in two colors. I'm wearing currently this shade right now, 100, as my bronzer, and it's a beautiful drugstore bronzer, but like I said, best of the best bronzers really came out in 2020, so this has certainly taken a back seat in my drawer, so I didn't really use this one that much this year. And I re-fell in love with my Physician's Formula bronzer as well, so it's still just as great. There's just greater. Okay, let's head into blushes. So I have some cream blushes that I was really into. The Nude Sticks Nudies All Over Face Colors focus. Yes, these guys. So these are a really nice cream blush formula. I love cream bronzer. I love cream blush. I hate cream highlighter, but there's something about a cream blush that blends into the skin and it looks so natural. So my favorite shade is in the nude. I just think it's the most neutral wearable color. Didn't wear, really go for these that much this year. I wasn't as into cream blushes this year. I hate wearing face makeup with a mask and I hate wearing cream fake makeup with a mask even more. So if I'm wearing a mask, I prefer powder. It doesn't feel so gross on my mask. So I didn't really use these this year, if I'm being honest. I still think they're great products, but again, it's one of those things where it's just a different time. My preferences are different for things that are out of my hands. Now the rest are powder blushes. So I loved the MAC Melba blush last year. I think it's such a great kind of neutral color. I originally bought this for my makeup kit and then kept it for myself because I really liked it. Um, I, I don't reach for it quite as much anymore. For a while, it definitely was my go-to blush. And again, I was more into blushes when I went to work because that was what I like to do. I like to have a lot of blush on my face and yeah, I just don't do that anymore. But it's a nice blush, but honestly, my wear on this has definitely slowed down. Um, I also really loved the Kylie just dropped something. I also discovered the Kylie Cosmetic Blushes last year. I ordered a whole set of them and I really, really love them. I will say they're still nice, but they're not the best. But there's one color that I actually grab for still and that's Maddie on the Block just because it's such a super pink blush. And I think that has to do with the pink packaging. So when I go for a pink blush. This is the first thing that I see, the pink packaging. So I go, okay, I know Batty on the Black is a nice, gorgeous pink blush. So I don't use the other colors as much. They're a middle of the road formula. I just really like the colors that she has. So Batty on the Block is still in the running for being a favorite. Maybe not of 2020, but it definitely was regularly used. I also was in love with Sigma Corderosa. This is a gorgeous blush. Unfortunately, I really honestly haven't reached for it that much this year. Again, I just was more into blushes when I went into work and the blush was kind of my focal point. Now, while I'm at home, eyes are my focal point, so I'm not really as into blush anymore this year. This is really pretty. I can see myself really loving this when we get back into wearing makeup outside of our houses, but not a 2020 favorite. Okay, let's move on to highlighters. So we have the Dior Glow Face Palette in number two glitz. This year Dior has come out with a couple other colors and I like those colors more than this one. So this is still a gorgeous highlighter palette. Seriously, it's very, very nice. However, better ones of these specific quads have come out. So this, this is still really, really stunning but the new ones are nice and shinier and prettier. Ooh, I discovered one of the best highlighters of all time last year though. The Milk Makeup Lit 
Flex Highlighter. This is such a smoothing highlighter. It's a beautiful formula, but it's very, very shiny as well. I didn't use this one as much this year because I got a little bit more into soft highlights, but I cannot deny the superior formula of this highlighter. Definitely underrated in my opinion if you're looking for a nice, bright, shiny highlighter that's not going to emphasize your texture too much. It is a highlighter, so it's still gonna emphasize texture. She good, she good. Something a little bit more soft that I enjoyed last year though was the MAC Soft and Gentle Mineralized Skin Finish. I've gotta be honest, I don't think I touched this highlighter once this year until today. I did use it today just because I really couldn't remember what I would say about it. So it's actually a gorgeous highlighter. I definitely know why it was in my favorites last year. It's seamless. It's super glowy from within. Um, yeah, I think this just got pushed into the back of my drawer. I didn't see it, so I didn't use it. I also have some face palettes to share with you. So the first one is the Jouer Bouquet D'Amour Blush Palette. I was a fiend for this palette. It is stunning. I still love it. I'm wearing this shade as my blush on my cheeks right now. Oh, this palette was amazing and unfortunately they don't, they don't sell it anymore so that's why I don't wear it as much but I still grab for it quite a lot. It's still one of my favorite blush palettes. I think Jouer has a beautiful formula. The colors that are in here are perfect and most of these shades are sold individually but there's something about having all of these in a palette that just make it that much better so they need to bring this back. This was awesome. For a while, this product changed the game for me. This is the Natasha Denona Bloom Blush and Glow Palette. And I really thought she was onto something with this. I absolutely loved it. Oh, I'm blinding you, I'm sorry. And I couldn't wait for her to come out with other colors. And she has come out with a few other colors. And I'm sorry, but they do not match up to this one. She had such an opportunity for this to be a thing. Like a thing, popular, money maker. This is really good. And the rest were not. Honestly, I didn't really grab for this in 2020. I was testing out new formulas. Didn't really go back to this one. I probably used it once or twice this year. It's still really good, but... Again, it's weird times, weird time. Now we have the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Face Palette. Now I have to be honest with you, I have a love-hate relationship with this palette now. Overall, every time I wear this on my cheeks, the overall effect is stunning, but it really is not a perfect quad. Okay, you can't get this anymore anyway, so I'm not going to harp on it too much. But it takes a lot for this bronzer to show up. These are a bit too light and shiny, and it's just not perfect. It needs to be doctored. You are a glowing queen with this at the same time. So this was in my favorites because you just look so pretty. So even though it took a little bit of work, it looked so, so good as the final product. The last face palette that I had was the Benefit cheek leaders cookie highlighter so i guess it was not necessarily the whole palette but i thought that this guy was just a great little trio though i do believe i probably showed the big palette but anyways they're all one in the same uh but the cookie highlighter is one of the best highlighters ever not a highlighter that i reached for quite as frequently this year so definitely two years ago it was like top 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 of the list it's fallen down my preferences in highlighters has changed but nonetheless it's a fabulous very blinding gorgeous stunning highlighter you know what let me just it's been a while since i've given it some love yeah you see really really pretty i love it super blinding and shiny and every time i do these videos people are like it makes me so sad that you say you don't use it that doesn't mean i'm not still loving it i swatch things okay i swatch a lot like a lot swatching is worth a lot to me i come in my room and i'm like all the time anyways okay okay I have a couple glow face mists. Well, both of them are glowy. So the first one that we have is the Pixie Glow Mist. And I have to say, this stayed a pretty consistent spray for me in 2020 as well. This 
is one of the few face primers that I feel like actually makes my face really glowy and I think I can go a little bit overboard with this. I do not like the way that this smells but this gives me a glow like no other setting mist I've ever used before. So this is definitely a favorite that carried over into 2020. Didn't grab for the Catrice quite as much but I used it today and I do need to grab for it more. I think this one definitely just makes me more glowy so I reach for it more often but this feels better like oh I like the spray on this better it's not as glowy but it's still really pretty didn't use it as much in 2020 I also fell in love with an old classic the Mac painterly paint pot mine is dry dusty and crusty um, I need to like throw this away because it's just not as effective as it once was. I use it as my base today. My eyeshadow is creasing. It has to do with the fact that it's old and dried up. So 2020, I didn't really use this. This is really old. I need to put this with my empties for Back to Max. Is Back to Max still a thing? I hope so because I have a lot to give. We're going to move on to eyebrows. The Esum Brow Defining Pencils I tried. And honestly, I didn't use these at all in 2020, but it's not 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 my fault these are really really great i used uh the br the brunette today and yes it's just as good as i remember but these are what i use in my makeup kit i didn't do makeup this year so they're so good i just didn't have the opportunity and then i also discovered the Sigma Clear Brow Gel last year this is still one of my favorites i fell in love with the Benefit as well this year but this one really, I, I love the shape of this spoolie. It's not too big or fat. And I really love the way that it directs my brows. It's really, really good. So still in my regular routine. I've kind of fallen off on the ColourPop Brow Bossed Gel. I just feel like my Sigma and my Benefit do a better job of directing my brow hairs. This one I liked because it made my brows look a little bit thicker. I need to pick this one up more. I really like it. But I discovered some really nice brow gels in 2020. Like I love the Marc Jacobs. The Rare Beauty is really good as well. So this one's kind of fallen off my radar a little bit. Still very nice. Now let's move on to eyeshadow. Now I actually had a whole separate video of my favorite eyeshadow of 2019 so let me know if you want me to do a video of the where are they now for them I did use my Huda Beauty Mercury retrograde on my eyes today but that was from that video I just felt like wearing it and oh it's stunning but I did feature these in my 2019 makeup favorites because they weren't palettes and these little Kaja Bento trios were awesome. So how they work and this is Toasted Caramel. I hope these are still available. You have three layers and the quality on these were phenomenal. So they had a couple of different formulas. So this particular one that I'm showing you right now are all shimmers, really pretty. They also came out with a round that had a mixture of textures. So mattes and shimmers. These were so good, so creamy. Um, me being the eyeshadow hoarder that I am, I was really into palettes this year, so I did not dig for these at all. I don't think I grabbed for them in 2020 at all. The quality, probably I'm gonna assume, is still absolutely amazing because I remember being floored by the quality of these and their color stories are really cute. I'm actually gonna leave these out on my desk because I do thoroughly enjoy them, so I wanna give them some love. Moving on to eyeliners, I discovered some good ones in 2019. So 2019 was the year that I fell in love with the ColourPop Cream Gel Eyeliners. Just a multitude of colors that I own. I actually have some more coming my way. Now I don't think these are the most amazing formula, but I like to get these in odd colors for fun makeup looks and they certainly get the job done for a really good price. So, you know, they're not as good as maybe an Urban Decay eyeliner pencil, but these are also $6 versus $20. So it's a lot easier to justify, especially since I buy them in kits, so that makes them even more affordable. I still am using and abusing these in 2020. They're still the best if you want colored eyeliner. I can't believe this was a 2019 favorite. I feel like this came out in 2020, but this is the ABH liquid liner. It still is one of my most used liner 
years. Well into 2020. I used it today. I think it's one of the most perfect matte black liquid liners. It's a true black and it's actually a true matte finish. So still using this one part of my regular routine. Two mascara favorites. I don't have the actual mascara that I love. This is a different version of from the same collection. This is the Essence Lash Princess. Go for the one with the green blue packaging coloring right here. Amazing. This color, not so amazing, but I felt like that Essence Lash Princess separated, lengthened, and volumized my lashes in a way that no other mascara had. Still one of my favorites, just working through some of the mascaras that I currently own. And then the Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara. I always have a tube open in my makeup collection. This is the best. Now, She's a flaky mess, I'm not gonna lie, but how thick she makes my lashes makes it worth it. So I continue to use this pretty much every day. So still one of my favorites, but not perfect. I do think the essence is a bit better, if I'm being honest. All right, we're gonna finish off in the lip section now. And I feel like I did not get very adventurous with my lips in 2020 because these could carry over into my 2020 favorites for sure, especially when we're talking lip liners here. So 2019, I discovered my ColourPop cream gel, what are these? Just their lippy pencils, because I bought a whole vault of them for Black Friday. My love affair with these, just as strong as 2019. They're the best, they are. No, they're not the best, best, best quality. Pat McGrath, Charlotte Tilbury, take the cake. But for $6 and the colors that you get, you can't go wrong, especially just the options that you have, you know? So, still loving these well into 2020, along with the Pat McGrath Done Undone Lip Liner. Truly just a perfect everyday kind of lip Pencil. I will say though, my collection this year of the Pat McGrath lip liners has grown. So while last year Done Undone was the one that I used, I now have a collection of Pat McGrath colors that I use along with this one. So this one is not getting used quite as much because I love buff, I love contour, and there's a few others that are in my Pat lip pencil rotation. And then I also really enjoyed the Alamar Cosmetics Dulce Lip Pencil, amazing formula. Now this has been replaced by my Pat McGrath Contour Lip Pencil. They're virtually the same, um, but this is still really good. I still use this quite frequently this year. I just like my Pat McGrath a bit better. I think the Pat McGrath lasts a little bit longer. Let's move into lipsticks here. So the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lipstick collection came out and I still love, love, love that lip collection. But I did want to share with you the colors that I currently used more this year. So I loved Natasha last year. Still love it into this year. It's the perfect lipstick for a cool tone. That's the lipstick that I'm wearing today. I also would dig for Michelle a lot. It's a little bit more on the brownie side, but it also is a little bit deeper than Natasha. So I love a good brown lip. I really do. Brown nude lips are kind of my go-to. So Michelle and Natasha, perfect for that. Now Natasha did release two new I Need a Nude lip colors this year. This is a fairly new collection, and I believe just because they're new, I've been grabbing for them a ton. I know I love the formula, the packaging is pretty, so my eye is attracted to them when I end up pulling them out. So I've been using Maria and Andrea a lot, mostly based on the fact that they're new, but Maria in particular is my favorite, but Andrea also just a little bit deeper. Honestly, not that different on the lips if I'm being honest, but they are still phenomenal. So I've just been using those colors a lot. Also was really into the Charlotte Tilbury Hot Lips 2 collection. I've pared down what my most used colors were. I'm not using all of the colors regularly anymore. I mean, it's hard to with the size of the collection that I have, but these two colors are ones that 
I find swimming in my purse. So the first one is In Love with Olivia. And I must say, this is probably my favorite most used one. I really got into an everyday pinky lip this year because it just, it adds so much life to your face. It adds so much color. So I feel like I can't go wrong with In Love with Olivia. It's definitely one of my most recommended colors for you guys. I know I do have my my honey one is my favorite and then nude Kate also a favorite of mine but when I want to go in a more pinky direction in love with Olivia is great. Also something a little bit more of a lighter peachy color we have Angel Alessandra so it just depends on my mood. I do prefer in love with Olivia but Angel Alessandra is also one that's in my pretty regular ish rotation. It's hard to be regular when you have the size of my makeup collection. Not complaining though. I love it. And then, oh my gosh, this is a good one. Becca Sugar. I remember Mel Thompson recommended this and she was like, it's the perfect color. It goes with everything and she is right. Whenever I'm not sure what color I want to wear, Becca Sugar is a sure thing. It's going to look good. I definitely don't wear this as much as I did in 2019, but it still is one of those staple nude colors that is fabulous. And you can see the complete different tone it is than In Love with Olivia, but it's perfect. The last lipstick that I was absolutely cocoa for Cocoa Puffs on was the Marc Jacobs Sugar Sugar. My love for this is not as hard as it was in 2019. <sighs> they don't even sell this anymore, so that's part of it, but it's just the perfect beigey kind of nude shade. Really stunning with a nice, really nude lip gloss and a brown lip liner. Don't use this one quite as often anymore, but it gives me fond memories. All right, let's finish off with lip glosses. First one is a Morphe lip gloss, and I highly recommend Morphe lip glosses. I know we have a little bit of a toot about Morphe, some of us, but did you know their lip glosses were made in the USA, which I think is awesome, and I really think they have an amazing formula going for them as well. Boho is just the perfect kind of nude gloss, pinky nude. It goes over so many nude lips very well, so I still highly recommend this one. I also loved the Bite Beauty. Beauty Flat White Lip Gloss. This was in everybody's 2018 favorites, which encouraged me to pick this up for the year of 2019. It's a very, very nude lip gloss. You can't get it anymore. Bite has read on their line, reformulated to make themselves vegan and cruelty free. This is gorgeous. I haven't grabbed for it because you guys can't get it, so. I haven't used it at all, but it's still stunning. Pat McGrath Labs Dare to Bear Lip Gloss. This is still one of my favorites into 2020. I feel like Pat McGrath's lip glosses have such a unique shine. They're thick, but extra juicy on the lips. And Dare to Bear is definitely one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, you guys. I made the largest Pat McGrath Black Friday order for the $12 lip products, like 23 lip products. I am not exaggerating. So we're about to have an influx of new Pat McGrath lip glosses coming in and I am not mad about it. I'm really excited because best lip formula and Dare to Bear. I don't think it's the number one lip gloss that I would recommend anymore, but it still is my most used Pat McGrath lip gloss. It's just perfect. The very last one is <laughs> The Kylie Cosmetics Lip Gloss in Diva. It's just this muted kind of rosy pink color. For the sake of today's video, I wore it because I completely forgot about this lip gloss. I forgot that I owned it. I had to dig and dig in my collection to find it. And it's still a nice lip gloss, but obviously it didn't carry into 2020 since I was like, why was this even in my 2019 favorites? Are these supposed to smell like candy? Like it doesn't smell old, but for some reason I was under the impressions that this would smell like candy. And the fact that it doesn't smell like candy makes me think it's old. All right, you guys, anyways, my throat is dry. I need to stop talking. But that was my 2019 makeup favorites revisited, telling you where they're at now. Please refrain from the comments talking about what a makeup waster I am. Even if I can't use everything, all of my products are loved and well taken care of and they make me happy, so mind your own business. 
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know if you want me to go into my 2019 palette favorites. I think I'm going to anyways, but still encourage me so that I get that up sooner. Keep an eye out for my 2020 makeup favorites. I'm really, really nervous about what I'm going to pick. I t This year was just such a weird year. I wore makeup in a way that I never wore makeup before and... I only really like the eyeshadow palettes this year that I can come up with at the top of my head. Whatever. Yeah, subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for that. I will see you later. Goodbye, guys. Have a good one.